It is my privilege now to call upon the president of our congregation, David Astro. He has been relentless in his dedication to this congregation, and he has been a wonderful leader. He shares with you words. He has shared not only many words in our journal, but he has opened his home and his heart to our congregants and created a real sense of work. Funny thing is, there's some days I think David's in the congregation more than I am, but that is the plight of our leaders and that is the dedication of our leaders. It is my privilege to call upon David Astro, the president of our congregation. Mishana Tova. It's a pleasure to address you again as president of Washington Hebrew Congregation. As you can imagine, formulating my remarks for the new year has occupied a lot of my thinking over the past months. Speaking to a crowd this large is not a typical experience for me. What can I possibly say to express the honor I have had as a lay leader in this congregation? What can I say to encourage and entice you to participate more in all that this congregation has to offer? not for the sake of the congregation, but for your own sake. What can I say to express the deep and sincere appreciation I feel toward our clergy and staff for their professionalism, skill, and ability to comfort us in our times of need, lead us in our times of celebration, and encourage us to be our best as a means to fulfill our personal spiritual needs? What can I say? Some of you may recall that last year I recited a prayer, my prayer for you and me and the relationship that I hope to create between us during my term. This year, I am moved to express my gratitude for so many things. I am grateful for the relationship that I have developed over the past year with so many of you and the opportunities that I have had. And I am grateful for the incredible words of support that I have received from congregants, clergy, and staff during the year. My words cannot express how meaningful your words have been to me. I am so, so grateful for all of that. But frankly, what I am most grateful for is something that I did not include in my prayer last year, something that was unexpected but has been an incredible blessing for me. This year, I have realized more than in any prior year of my life how important it is to me to be a reformed Jew in America today. I never would have guessed that this is what I am most grateful for, but it is the fact. More events than I could have ever imagined have taken place that caused me to search for guidance on how I should react how I can help, how I can make sense of what has occurred, and whether there's anything I could possibly do to prevent reoccurrence. As Reformed Jews, we learn that we cannot sit idly by in the face of hatred, suffering, and strife. How often we hear that although it is not our responsibility to fix everything, it is absolutely our responsibility to do something. As Reformed Jews, we learn and we know that we cannot ignore that responsibility. It does not matter if there are laws requiring us to treat our fellow human beings with respect and dignity. We know as Reformed Jews, individually and collectively, it is our responsibility to do so. It does not matter if we have laws affording us the right to say anything. As Reformed Jews, we know that words of hate and incitement cannot be ignored because those words can lead to unspeakable horror. When neo-Nazis marched in Charlottesville, chanting anti-Semitic and racist chants, my inbox was flooded with words of reflection and perspective from many Reformed Jewish leaders, including beautiful words from Rabbi Lustig, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, the president of the Union of Reform Judaism, and Rabbi Jonah Pesner, the director of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism. 
They shared that Reform Judaism teaches us to address hate with love, ignorance with education, embrace the stranger, and shout the loudest on behalf of those who have no voice. As an American, these ideals of Reform Judaism provided me with comfort, relief, and direction. So I am a proud American Reform Jew. That is why I have no patience for a fundamentalist Jewish cleric, a chief rabbi in Israel, who says that my religion is fake or watered down, and my clergy who are trained in the true meaning of Torah are not eligible to convert an individual to Judaism. What does he think attracts people to become Jewish in the first place? The intolerance, rigidity, and small-mindedness that he preaches, or the challenge to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God that our clergy preach? As an American Reformed Jew, I know that there is right and wrong. I know that every human being has been created in the image of God. So when anyone expresses otherwise, that some human beings are superior to others for any reason, they deserve to be challenged and condemned. On that issue, there are no two sides. There is only one side. As an American Reformed Jew, and particularly as a member of Washington Hebrew Congregation, I have had the pleasure and enjoyment to share meals and conversations with many people of other faiths, Muslims, Christians, Hindu, and others. I've had the privilege to get to know them as people, not Muslim people, not Christian people, not Hindu people, but as people. We share the same dreams, desires, and concerns for ourselves, our families, and our communities. They may dress differently than I do, look different, speak different, pray different, but as an American Reformed Jew, to all of that, I say both thank God for that diversity and so what? Whether someone chooses to cover their head with a yarmulke, a turban, or a baseball cap has never hurt me. Whether someone wears a necklace with a Jewish star, a cross, or a heart around their neck has never hurt me. Whether someone closes their eyes and prays in Hebrew, makes the sign of the cross, or bows towards Mecca has never hurt me. But when people choose to chant, Jews will not replace me, carrying torches in the night, that hurts me. When people espouse that Muslims should not be admitted to this country for the sole reason that they are Muslim, that hurts me. When people pass laws that gender identity prevents someone from using a bathroom, that law hurts me. We are all created in the image of God. That does not mean that God looks like us with faces, arms, and legs. As a Reformed Jew, I learn that it means that we must act as God would act. Act like everything depends on us. Act with kindness, tolerance, forgiveness. When we get that sick feeling when we witness marchers chanting anti-Semitic chants, or cringe when we see the image of a lifeless child washed ashore after falling overboard in attempt to flee strife in a foreign land, or can't hold back tears when we see the carnage from a senseless terrorist act, or feel offended to the core when we hear the words of a fundamentalist rabbi challenging our validity as Jews, that, my friends, is what it feels like to hear the voice of God calling on us, each of us, to act and do something. Our world is clearly threatened if no one chooses to do something. But frankly, the only person who we can ensure will do something is ourselves. As members of this glorious congregation, there are so many opportunities and choices available to you to do something. So please, in this year of 5778, I beseech you, make that choice. Can you hear what's on? May it be God's will.